Welcome to the farm. Welcome to the farm. I'm Justin, and behind me is what I'm calling my micro Chinese excavator. Now recently I've been putting this thing through its paces, doing a big trenching project for a water line. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to that playlist in the description. Check it out. Like I said, we've been putting this thing through its paces and working it hard. And one thing I've learned is this thing gets really, really hot. It's got an air cool engine in it, so there's no radiator, no coolant, nothing. And when this seat is down, there's not much airflow. You got the vents on the side and the back, but th unless you have a breeze coming across, there's no airflow going through this thing. So today we're gonna see if we can't make this thing a little bit cooler. So the plan is to install this small little 10 inch universal radiator fan that I picked up from AutoZone. I think it was like 67 bucks, relatively cheap. Now this thing doesn't have a radiator, so I'm not trying to blow air through a radiator. So unobstructed flow for this thing would be 650 CFM. I'm hoping that's enough to move enough air to keep this thing cool. If you were blowing through a radiator, this thing would be 500 CFM. I think we'll be somewhere in between because we don't have a full open spot. We have all this kind of metal in between, but the, uh, the slots are a lot bigger than the fins on a radiator. The plan is to take this guy and see if we can't mount it up underneath here on this side of the machine. So with the fan installed on the other side, the plan is to have it draw air through and blow the hot air out. The reason I'm doing that is twofold. One, I just, I feel like it's gonna create that kind of negative pressure and suck the heat out, letting cool air kind of flow in. And two, like I said before, this is an air-cooled engine. So typically the flywheel, which is underneath this part here, has little fins on it that actually kind of direct air to blow across the fins on the engine. And I feel like if I'm trying to blow in from that way, and this is trying to suck air this way across the engine, they're gonna be fighting each other. Hoping if I can get it to blow out that way, it'll increase the airflow across everything and keep everything a lot cooler. So before we get into opening up all the panels and figuring out how we're gonna wire this thing in, let's at least take it out of the box and see if it's even gonna fit in that spot. So here's our first look at the little fan. I think it's uh, pretty nice. That's the direction it spins. It is reversible according to the directions. So if it ends up blowing the wrong way, we can swap it around. Let's see if it'll fit in there. So I got my four mounting holes drilled, and ideally I'd like to just be able to stick the bolts through, put the fan on, put it on the backside, tighten it down. Unfortunately this panel's kinda caved in a little bit on the center. So when I was holding the fan up there and spinning it, it's actually touching the center a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is run my screw through, put a bolt on the backside, tighten that down, essentially turning them into studs, and that nut will hold the fan off just a little bit so that fan won't contact this panel. So I got this thing completely bolted in place now. I'm gonna actually run a second nut on 
to jam it together because I don't have any lock washers or lock nuts with me. So hopefully this will help hold it in place until I can buy some new ones. Now that we got the fan mounted, let's get the floor pan out of the way and the control panel out of the way. So I was going back and forth whether I was going to have the fan turn on with the key, if I was going to have a separate switch like the light is, or if I was just going to have it turn on when I flip the master switch on. And originally I was going to go with the master switch idea, but I thought about it a little bit and I like the idea of being able to turn it off here so that when I'm starting the machine I don't have the draw of the fan on it as well because it's not an overly big battery. And then in winter when I got to move this thing around, I don't need that fan running so I can just leave the switch off, start the machine let it run without the fan running. I will have it set up though that when the master switch is on, or off rather, this switch will not have power and the fan will not work. So let's go ahead and drill a hole. I think we're gonna mount our new switch right here and we'll get everything wired up. Before I go ahead and install my switch, I'm actually going to run the wiring, wire it together and then put it through because it's going to be a lot easier to get at the screws with it not installed. And my plan is to use this existing wire loom and run my wires down through this and pick up my power right down here, right where this loom is. And then I can run another loom from there up to my fan. So I got all my wires run down in the loom. I got my other loom added to go over to the fan. I'm not gonna hook this wire up to power yet. I'm gonna do that the very last thing. So I think we're ready to start wiring up the fan side.
So like I said earlier, I wanna get the fan working where if the disconnect switch is off, the fan will shut off so I don't accidentally leave it running and drain the battery. Unfortunately, I can't get the, the terminals loose underneath, so I'm gonna have to actually pull the switch so I can get wrenches on the terminals to connect my wire. So now the last thing we should have to do is hook up our power wire. We're gonna come right off the solenoid here where the, the battery feeds directly to. Once we hook that up, theoretically, this fan should work. everything all hooked up I think we're ready to turn this on and test the fan so before we go ahead and start testing my intention was to put a fuse in line I even had this fuse holder here fortunately I don't have any fuses that fit this here at the farm so that'll be something I'll have to probably cut in later but it'll just be in line up by the fan we'll just cut the hot wires butt splice this in and we'll be good to go all right, let's give it a test. So theoretically, if I turn this switch to on, nothing should happen. Perfect. Now if I turn on the disconnect switch and turn this on, now I should have fan. Nice. And if I forget to turn it off, disconnect switch will turn it off. The last thing I wanna check before we button this all up is I wanna make sure that the fan is pushing air the right direction. So basically what I'm gonna do is turn the fan on, put this plastic bag near it and see if the plastic bag pushes or sucks in. And of course it's sucking in because it's set up for a radiator. So we're gonna have to reverse this thing. So essentially to change the airflow, we have to remove the whole fan housing, take the fan off the housing, flip it upside down, and put it all back together. All right, so I got the fan blade switched around. Let's give it another test. Nope, still sucking air. I wonder why that is. So the fan is still running backwards. Turns out, not only do you have to switch the blades around, but you also got to switch the polarity, meaning flop the wires on the fan to make the motor spin the other way. 
So I am gonna go ahead and do that quick and we'll test it out again. All right, so we got the polarity change now. Let's uh, try it again. Oh yeah, now it feels like it's pushing. Oh yeah. We got it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the machine together and then uh, let's go give this a try. I gotta say, that is a massive improvement. I ran the machine for a few hours, not a single stumble, hiccup in the motor. Before I'd run it for 45 minutes and it'd start kinda like breaking up and stumbling because I was getting so hot. I had none of that for about three hours straight. And sitting on the machine, significantly more comfortable. It was still pretty warm, but nowhere near as bad as it was. I mean, I could even keep my hand on the, the steel next to the seat and it was just warm. Before, I couldn't even keep my hand on the seat, it was so hot. Hopefully you guys found this install entertaining, learned something from it. Look for the trenching videos, I'll have those in the description. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.